Hello everyone, it's Jackie, back for a GME update. It's been a lot of... <laughs> See, it's been so long since we did one, I fucked up the intro. It's a classic. So, haven't really been... Uh, haven't really been many things to say about GameStop's price action lately. It's just been in this like kind of holding pattern, if you will. Uh, but there's a few things that we can talk about here that uh, I think are pretty interesting. And so uh, I want to start on the weekly time frame. So on the weekly time frame, you have essentially printed a weekly doji. Okay, this is basically basically a weekly doji at what you could call a supportive level. Right, if you draw a trend line directly across from where we find ourselves right now, right, you guys will see that this has been an area of support and resistance for a very, very long time, just looking historically since the sneeze on GameStop's price action. All right, so printing a doji at support or resistance is a very, very important thing in and of itself, right, because it signals a lot of indecision, a lot of indecisiveness from both bulls and bears. So this is going to be a really, really important spot going forward. Now, I also know that 2540 is going to be a massive spot. Okay, 2540 is arguably the most important spot on GME's chart. It is a macro 382 Fibonacci from when we had our sneeze events. Okay, so if we take the Fibonacci from the most recent high to the most recent low you can see that that puts our 382 at around the same exact place right the exact same place basically where our 0.5 fibonacci is found from this low to this high all right so we go from that low to this high drag this across you can see that the 0.5 and the macro 382 okay the 0.5 and the macro 382 are basically aligning with one another signaling to us that this zone is going to be wickedly important not just that but you've also got your weekly 200 just above it at 2620 so we know that there's are there are hard layers of resistance above right we know that so we know that if we break through that zone with large amounts of volume and healthy price action you will see a monster explosion from gamestop and this chart is poised for a move. The move is poised. It looks like we are preparing to do something fairly significant. Okay, that's how it feels to me. It feels like we are preparing to do something rather significant. Now, you can see that we're resting right on the macro 382 Fibonacci. That is very, very important. And then turning off all of the drawings, one of the most important things that we have talked about for weeks now, post Golden Cross was price coming down and testing said golden cross. Well, you have so far tested that golden cross somewhat successfully, managing to hold above it as both of those moving averages continue to slope up and out, and the splay between these two moving averages continues to widen, suggesting that this is still very, very, very strong. And then look at the severe decline in volume, just like what we saw last time. Steep decline in volume, huge move afterwards. Steep decline in volume, huge move afterwards. That's what we're hopeful for, right? And this is what we look for with consolidative phases, right? We look for price to find an area of support, hold around there, right? After testing it multiple times, perhaps somebody's trying to, uh, I'll say, accumulate shares here, right? But price stabilizing after a test of a golden cross at a very clear area of support is just, it. it's very, 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 very important. Combine that with the really low volume sell-off that we have seen while price is trying to consolidate at these lows, once again, signaling that it's very, very, very bullish. So what are we looking for this week well plain and simple you want to see that golden cross continue to be either be tested or a huge breakout through it and you guys know the levels to break above 25 40 and then 26. if you can get through that with volume and with healthy price action i.e nice full body bullish candles you will see big explosive moves on gme because you are testing one of the most important technical artifacts on the chart with this golden cross, right? 
Now, if we fail to break out this week, right, if we fail to make a big breakout move, right, then we're going to look to support below. Support below can be at the daily 50, which comes in around 2330. Support can also be this macro golden pocket here, right, sitting right here at about $20. And then there's a gap fill underneath that, which we know is likely to be filled if we do start breaking through this daily 50 and back down. Right, and that gap fill doesn't complete until about $19. So that's what we would look at on the downside. Now, my prediction for the week, well, we're basically sitting in a four-hour RSI wedge. If I turn the drawings off, it's easier to see. You're basically inside of a four-hour RSI wedge. That's very positive. And then look at your daily MACD. Your daily MACD has now crossed through the center, and price barely did shit. And now you could potentially get a MACD cross that actually happens underneath the center. With all of this bullish divergence taking place, not just on the RSI, but on the MACD as well. This looks really, really healthy. So my prediction is, is that we will hold this daily 50 and push off of it. And then we'll have to see how we handle that $26 range and if buyers step in. But it looks pretty damn good to me. Right? And then here's the kicker. If we open up the Bollinger Bands on the four hour time frame, look at how tight these things are. This thing is just screaming at us that it wants to make a huge move. So the big goal this week, like I said, is getting towards the 25-26 range. Because then you'll be above the center of the four-hour Bollinger Bands as these things are tighter than they have ever been. Like this is really, really suggestive that a big move is coming. The IV has dropped just enough to keep bulls enticed. Right, if you look at GameStop's IV 112, that's the lowest that we've basically seen this now in the last, I'd say, eight weeks. So options contracts are now enticing to a lot of bulls who are interested in bidding this higher. Looking at this like it's a huge opportunity because it is. With these Bollinger Bands tight, with the RSI looking the way it does, with the Daily MACD looking the way it does, and price action printing weekly dojis and holding a supportive range, it's hard not to like what you see on this chart. Truly, it's hard not to like what you see on this chart. So now we just remain patient. We have to remain patient and let price determine and lead the way, right? Because by being predictive in nature... It opens us up to disappointment and ultimately failure. But by seeing both sides of the trade and understanding where the best opportunity lies, you guys know that if price breaks down, it's not bearish. You just know that 19 to 20 is going to be a great spot to look at for an opportunity. You guys also know that if we start breaking through 25, 26, you know that there's a pretty high statistical probability of us making a fairly large breakout towards the 30 and $40 ranges. And you guys know that with the four-hour Bollinger Bands, that move wants to happen sooner rather than later. When the bands get tight like this, they don't stay tight. They either explode up or explode down, but these things do not stay tight for very long. So we know that there's a move coming. Now it's our job to determine where we can see that potentially going and where the best opportunities to long the stock are. But as it currently stands, this thing looks great. Right? Last thing we'll talk about is I'll open up the DMIs on here. Right? And the daily DMI is still very suggestive that bulls are in control right now with the ADX flying high and the positive DMI still well above the negative. Opening up the four hour. The four hour had some Rick and Morty lips, which broke off, but the ADX is super, super low. So we're looking for that ADX on the four hour to begin turning around as the positive DMIs continue to stay on top. But this thing looks as healthy as ever, and now it is truly just a matter of time before this thing makes its next massive move. So be patient. Look for the best opportunities and strike when the iron is hot. But guys, GameStop, the trade is still there. Nothing has changed. It's just hard to make videos when price ain't really doing shit. And I don't really do like tinfoil hopium bullshit, right? So, you know, T35, whatever else, blah, 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 blah. I don't know, right? I, I just, I, I stay in my lane. You, they stay in theirs, right? <laughs> 
But the opportunity is presenting itself very soon, and we will be able to see where the price is going to go. We just must have patience and allow this to develop so that we can see what's going to happen. But how can you not like price making higher lows within an uptrending range? Like, how can you not like what is happening on this chart? Like, I really think that this thing is setting up for a massive breakout. And the funny thing is, is you've got a stock like Cost making its biggest move that we have seen in three plus years. Right? This is the biggest move that we've seen on Cost since uh, since its squeeze events back when. Right? This is the single biggest move we've seen since then. And that is the largest daily volume candle that Cost has ever had in its history. Look, that's the history of Cost stock. And look at this thing. That is the largest volume that you have ever seen on COS. And this is part of the meme basket. And typically when this thing begins to run, GameStop is not far behind. Look, last time this thing began to run, April 29th. Open up GME's chart, April 29th. Look at that. These things tend to run in tandem. So if COS has a 300% move in a single day, you best believe that this thing's gearing up for something special. But you got to be patient. And believe me, you'll know when the time is right. Believe that. You could even argue with me. And it's, it's tough. You could argue with me that this is just one giant bull flag. It's a really fucking ugly one. But, like, you could argue with me on it. I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't mind. Like, you could argue that that's literally the most ghetto, ugly bull flag of all time. But it could be one. And if it were, I mean, Christ almighty, this thing's going to go to triple digits. And then what? Fireworks. But just be patient, guys. Allow this thing to develop. But you can see on the chart, through the four-hour time frame and the daily, we are testing an important zone. An important technical artifact, a daily bullish golden cross. You've got the weekly doji. You've got the four-hour Bollinger Bands tight as shit. She's ready to go. Now just be patient and let that opportunity present itself. But I'm telling you guys, this thing is ready. It's gearing up. Just be patient because we don't want to jump in too soon and then people bag hold or feel like they're bag holding, right? You don't want to jump in too soon. Especially those of you that like options. You've got to find the best opportunity, right? So, none of this is financial advice. Obviously, just educational content. You guys know that. So, thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate your time. And uh, I will see you on stream this week. See you later, folks.